Now, when using NATS and Jetstream, sometimes there could be a lot of things to manage. And so one of the things we wanted to make a bit easier inside of Synadia Cloud and Synadia Platform is just Jetstream management in general. You might not want to always look at a CLI tool or even build your own tooling to kind of manage all of this stuff. And so we've built this Jetstream tab out to kind of give you all of the tools that um, we've given you in the NATS CLI, but just available in kind of a nice UI and centralized API. And this also allows us to combine some of the other really nice features of Synadia Cloud and Synadia Platform into how we manage Jetstream. So today, let's dive into what it looks like to manage Jetstream on Synadia Cloud, and I'll kind of go over all of the features um, you know, around that. So we'll start by creating a stream, because we don't have any streams in this particular account. But we do have some messages flying around, so I'm just going to create a stream to just start capturing some subjects, and then we can um, look at that data that's, uh, that's coming into the stream. So when you hit the Create Stream button, we actually have a couple of things that we can create. And we'll start with uh, just a regular old stream. I'm going to give my stream a name, and I'm just going to call this um, Heartbeats. And I'm going to say a heartbeat um, tracker for accounts. And because I know that we have a subject here, um, I can go down to the subjects tab and I can say uh, I want to track uh, accounts dot uh, star, let's say. Um, and that way we can kind of get info from our heartbeats that are coming from our various accounts in our fictitious widget co um, deployment. Um, here I can set stuff to, you know, our, our stream to file or memory if your uh, system supports it. Um, but I can also set all of the retention policies here. And so if you've ever used kind of NATs and, and have a hard time figuring out how, you know, the various uh, policies and settings work inside of streams, you could also go to this little, um, you know, information icon and we'll explain a little bit more to you about how each of these, um, each of these things work. And so if I wanted to, for instance, turn on or off rollups, I could easily do that by clicking um, the toggle over here. Um, you could also set uh, stream limits, um, which in some systems, like if you're using Synadia Cloud, you might have to set things like max bytes um, because we're going to be you know, tracking that against your account usage in general. Um, and then lastly, we have the, the placement section over here. And this is where you get to um, choose kind of where your stream is stored, which is great um, because I could choose the amount of replicas. It defaults to three for high availability. We can set it to one and we'll even get a little warning over here that, hey, running one replica, you know, it, the, we don't guarantee that it's going to have 100% uptime. Um, you might want to run three if you, if you need that 100% uptime. Um, but you could also set, you know, arbitrary cluster tags to fit your system. Um, and you could also choose, uh, you know, which cluster you want to set this on, which is really, really useful. And we're actually going to use this in, in a little bit when we talk about mirrors. Um, but I'm just going to use all of the defaults here. And I'm going to hit, go ahead and hit save. And you can see that we now have our heartbeat stream um, showing up here inside of our table. Now, if I refresh the page, you can see we already have 60 messages inside of our heartbeats. If I click into this stream, we actually get a stream viewer that will show us all of the data for that particular stream. Um, and you can do all sorts of things, like filter by a particular subject. In my case, we only have one subject here, so it's going to kind of be hard to filter. But if I wanted to say, hey, let's um, look at the start sequence um, you know, from 10 on, we can use that. Um, and that can be a really nice way to kind of see, okay, what's, you know, from this start sequence on, um, you know, here's the data that I get to see, um, which is really good. We can choose a particular start date that we want to look at the stream by, uh, start time, and we can even toggle a live mode so we can kind of see data pour in in real time, which can be really, really useful um, for these kinds of things. Um, and so you can filter your stream, but you can also inspect each and every individual message. So if I found a message that I like or want to look at in particular, I can click on that and I could see its value. Now, this is just a simple, you know, arbitrary message, an account heartbeat that says ping. Um, this could be for some toy scheduler I'm working on or something like that. Um, but one of the really neat things is I could look at the value and I could even decode it in um, some basic format. So if you're using Base64, well, you know, Base64 decode it, um, JSON, XML, string. Um, and we have plans for putting more of these in. Maybe you're passing around protobuf and you need to be able to kind of decode that payload to see it inside of the UI. Um, you know, we'll have support for that in the future. You could also inspect all of the headers that come along and sometimes this could be really 
really useful for um, looking at particular message headers if you're using that um, inside of Jetstream. So, uh, so you can look at each and every one of these individual messages, which is really, really nice. If I click over here, um, I can configure my stream a bit more, um, or I could even jump over and look at the consumers. And here's kind of the cool part is, you know, I'm going to go ahead and open this one in a new tab and head over to it. Um, you can see that I actually have a consumer for this stream, and it happen just so happens to be um, that stream viewer that is that consumer. So you can kind of see, you know, which ones are, are pending, which ones are waiting for act. That's kind of waiting for my live mode to be toggled. Um, but you can look at all of the information for this particular consumer. And so if you are or if you're having you know troubles with consumers, you can pop into this kind of consumer view inside of the stream, and you can look at all these consumers and kind of see what's going on here, um, where the consumer is placed. Uh, also, kind of any outstanding uh, acknowledgments, uh, unprocessed messages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so this can be really, really nice. Uh, the other thing I could do is if I wanted a, my own durable consumer, maybe I want this call, you know, heartbeat um, processor, and I wanted to hand this off for a client to be able to consume, I can uh, configure everything here in this consumer, whether it's filter subjects, acknowledgement settings, um, etc. Uh, whether it's a pull consumer or a push consumer, how much I want them to wait on. This can be really, really nice um, as opposed to the CLI to be able to kind of create and manage these consumers um, in this way. Because I think it's just a really nice, more fluid way to kind of, uh, you know, look at all of these consumers, manage them, kind of see where they might be having issues, etc. Um, and that's pretty much it when it comes to a, uh, you know, a particular managing a particular stream. I can look at some high level metrics, um, see how it's configured and even changes configuration on the fly. Let's uh, go into um, a, another bit about Jetstream management, and that's kind of creating uh, KV buckets and object stores. So just like a stream, I can create a KV bucket here as well. I'm just going to call this my KV. Um, and just like a stream, a KV bucket also has its own viewer, it has its own settings. Um, we, we can place it just like we can a stream. Uh, but we have, you know, a lot less settings, things like history, TTL, max value size, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a KV bucket here. And it looks like it set its replication factor at three, which is totally fine. But you could also notice that, you know, based off of how much I've reserved for this particular uh, stream, um, you can see that that accounts against uh, my limit. So I have uh, in my my standard, you know, file storage was just, you know, one uh, one replica. Um, I have, you know, a certain amount of gigabytes, uh, 40 gigs on this account, and then I have uh, looks like about 10 gigs of HA assets. So that's kind of taken up um, a, a slice of that. Uh, I can allocate more space to this if I really needed to, um, but that's kind of how you manage all of your um, account allocations and how you can kind of see them at a glance, whether your consumers, file storage, or the number of streams that you have. Um, all of this stuff is taken into account, which is really really nice. Um, just like the stream, my KV has its own um, kind of KV viewer, which is really really nice. Um, so if you're seeing you know keys in here, you can filter them, things like that. You can even see consumers. So if you have things that are like watching that particular KV, and I can change any settings that I want. Maybe I want to take replicas down to one for this KV. Um, I can easily do that and just hit save. Um, one other neat part that a lot of people don't know um, just about Jetstream in general is that I could actually like move um, a lot of these uh, Jetstream assets in real time. Now this works a bit you know better if you have uh, multiple replicas and you know you might go for a smoother experience, but it actually still does keep the um, the particular stream up um, even as you move it across regions, which I think is really really neat. So um, I can go over here and edit uh, the heartbeats stream for instance and scroll all the way down to the bottom where I see placement. And I could simply just you know change my cluster to Europe West three as an example. I'm going to go ahead and hit save, and that's going to change the cluster. It's going to uh, move it over, and it looks like it's still live. And so any clients connected to it, they're still going to remain connected. They're still going to be served um, by that stream as a consumer, um, and all that data is still going to be available, which is really really nice. Just with a couple of clicks of a button, I've like literally relocated a stream <laughs> across the world into another cluster, um, and that can be really really nice. Um, similar to moving, we also have the ability to mirror streams. So maybe this heartbeat stream I've moved into Europe because that's where I want a lot of the rights to happen. But maybe I want to read from this stream in a uh, you know in a quicker way um, over here on the east, east uh, west coast of the U.S. I can easily create a mirror, and I'm just going to call this um, heartbeats mirror. And then I can choose what I want to um, 
what I want to use for my mirror, what uh, start sequence I want, what start time, and what filter subject. I'm going to keep all of these blank because I just want to replicate the whole thing as a mirror. Um, and I can then choose, hey, where do I want this mirror to live? And I can kind of look over here and see, you know, we have an AWS US West 2 that we want to replicate it to. And let's just keep this replica at one. And I can easily just hit save. And now we have the heartbeats mirror. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page and notice that it's all caught up and has the exact same amount of messages. Um, and so this is a really nice way, and it looks like I kind of flubbed the, the replicas bit a, a little bit here. Let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to go uh, here, and I'm going to change replicas to one. There we go. And hit save. So as you could see with uh, with Jetstream, it's really, really easy to be able to change things, move them around, um, replicate things, uh, and it, it leads to just a really, really great experience overall when it comes to managing Jetstream assets. Um, lastly, we can also create uh, object store buckets. I'm just gonna call this images. Um, we'll, again, put replicas at one because we just want to have, you know, we, we want to be on the wild side and just use one replica everywhere. Um, but as you can see, you could just start creating these assets and using them inside of your clients, um, managing them, managing their consumers, um, their various settings, and even inspect um, the various uh, messages that kind of come along. So uh, that's about it for this episode about uh, Jetstream. Next video, we're going to be looking at the user management inside of Synadia Cloud and Synadia Platform. So stay tuned for that one.